Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ and we're back for the penultimate episode of our Pokemon Heart Gold Random Card Challenge. Last time we took down Lieutenant Surge, Sabrina and Misty, which took a fair bit of luck. We drew a weak team for our battle with the Saffron City Gym Leader and Misty borrowed Tobias' Darkrai for a day when we faced her. Now it's time to head west to take on the Celadon City Gym Leader. Erica has four Pokemon in Heart Gold, so that's how many cards we need to draw. It looks like we'll be using Mew, Omanyte, Magby and Magnemite. I like this team a lot. We've got a good range of typings, and of course we have Mew too. Not Mew too, but Mew too. You you get it. The biggest issue is the shared ground weakness that only Mew avoids, but it's Mew, so I'm not too worried. There's also the fact that Magnemite should absolutely avoid ground type moves, but we'll have to learn to deal with that. All right, let's have a look at the team. First up, we've got Pariki the Magnemite. At level 56, the apparently gravity-stricken electric type has the moves Thunderbolt, Magnet Rise, Thunder Wave, and Flash Cannon. Up next, we've got Shyamalan the Omanyte, who's a few levels lower at 52. The fossil Pokemon has the moves Ancient Power, Ice Beam, Hidden Power, and Surf. Third in line is Sula the Magby, who's on par with Pariki at 56, and her moveset's made up of Flamethrower, Confuse Ray, Smokescreen, and Psychic. Finally, we have Rubu the Mew, who's at level 51 with the moves Psychic, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, and Sludge Bomb. We've got Ice Beam there to cover any ground types that are giving the rest of the team problems. Aside from that, we've just gone for some diverse special attacks. Okay, this is for Kanto Gym Badge number 4. Let's go for it. Erica leads off with her Dug Trio, and we send out Magnemite first. So, an immediate ground type. Good start. I did put Magnet Rise in Pariki's moveset just for this, but I always forget just how fast Diglett and Dug Trio can be. In fact, only one of the seven Pokemon who can learn Extreme Speed by level up has a higher base speed stat than Dug Trio. I went for Magnet Rise to get Pariki off the ground, but while just sitting there, Dug Trio destroys the surrounding terrain with Earthquake. That's an easy one shot, and after a single turn, we're down to three. Knowing that Dug Trio would probably outspeed Mew anyway, I decided to send in Omanyte Shyamalan instead. The fossil Pokemon's high defense stat leads Erica to pull for Mud Bomb, but I have a feeling that Earthquake may have been slightly more effective. The physical hit is about two and a half times stronger than Mud Bomb when you take Dugtrio's attack and special attack into account. Omanyte's physical defense is only around 220% of his special defense though. Still, I don't think Earthquake would have been enough, but it would have been much closer. Surviving the hit allows Omanyte to summon a powerful wave that wipes out Dugtrio and evens things up. Erica sends in her Sceptile next, and I don't think there will be a late twist in this tale. Shyamalan is easily outsped by the fully evolved Hoenn Grass starter who darts in close to strike with Leaf Blade. The quad effective attack is so much more than enough and takes us down to two. Luckily, we have a Magby on our side, so Sula's up next. The forest Pokemon opens things up by slamming his 5 foot 7 frame right down on the feeble fire type. A critical hit leaves Magby with only 4 HP remaining, but Flame Body does at least burn Sceptile. On top of that, with the grass typing close, Magby's able to light him up with Flamethrower, scoring a one-shot to make it a two-on-two. Out -two. third for the Celadon Gym Leader is Latias. Okay. The legendary Psychic Dragon speeds at Magby, slamming her with Zen Headbutt for an unnecessarily powerful knockout blow. Now we're down to just one, and as well as Erica's final Pokemon, we've still got a full health Latias to take care of. We send in Mew and call for an Ice Beam. Erica doesn't know what to expect from the mythical Pokemon, so orders Latias to use Charm. That won't affect Rubu though, whose attack takes the Eon Pokemon below half health. The best Latias can do is a weak Zen Headbutt, but Mew just persists with Ice Beam. Erica's healing items keep Latias going for a bit, but after freezing her, Rubu adds Insult to Injury with a critical hit to finish things. Gallade comes in last for Erica, and once again, healing items drag things out. Gallade can't even get a hit in as Rubu brushes him aside with Psychic. Rainbow badge in hand, we're ready to head south to Fuchsia City and take on Janine. From our dwindling card pile, we need to draw five cards for our face-off against the Fuchsia City Gym Leader. It looks like we're going to be using Cubone, Rapidash, Haunter, Ninkata, and Stantler. That's one of the better teams we've had recently. We do have three Pokemon weak to water, but Haunter and Stantler should be fine. Alright, let's have a look at the team. First up, we've got Comet the Stantler, who's at level 50 with the moves Return, Hypnosis, Confuse Ray, and Zen Headbutt. Oasis the Cubone's a few levels lower at 47, and he's got Earthquake, Return, Aerial Ace, and Brick Break. Ramus the Haunter's also at 47, and his moveset's made up of Shadow Ball, Confuse Ray, Hidden Power, and Sludge Bomb. Arcadia the Ninkata's our third level 47, and she's got X Scissor, Return, Aerial Ace, and Dig. 
Finally, we've got Rohan the Rapidash, who's at level 44, and his moveset's made up of Flare Blitz, Return, Mega Horn, and Poison Jab. Alright, I'm feeling good about this team. Let's give this a try. Janine leads off with Kabutops, and we start things off with Startler. Combining Confuse Ray with Zen Headbutt, Comet takes the early advantage in the battle. The Intimidated Fossil Pokemon does manage to strike once with Slash, but it's not too bad. Eventually, Janine's forced to use a full restore, but Startler quickly gets back to work with Zen Headbutt. After one more slash, Kabutops goes down to the psychic attack, giving us the lead in battle. The new future gym leader sends in her Chimeco next, who's immediately struck by Comet's return, and just like that, we are two up. Ariados is up next, which makes sense as there are usually two here, so we recall Startler and send in Rapidash. The spider uses agility, which doesn't make a lick of difference as Rohan tramples him with Flare Blitz. Three down, two to go. Janine brings in her Torterra next, which seems peculiar against Rapidash, but clearly she's not the best gym leader. Another Flare Blitz leaves the Grass and Ground type on the brink of fainting, but the recoil means Rohan's not doing much better. Earthquake finishes off Rapidash, and when Ramus comes in, Janine uses another full restore. Luckily for us, while Torterra recovers from his injuries, Haunter's able to attack twice with Sludge Bomb. Those hits score Ramus a knockout and leave us in a 4 on 1. Swellow comes in, and I'm gonna speed things up a bit. We give Arcadia and Oasis a run in the battle and Janine breaks out a third full restore. In this economy, it is truly nice for some. Nepotism and Simony really run rampant in Fuchsia City. Double Team slowed things down a lot, but eventually the battle ended with a double knockout. Aerial Ace took down Ramus and the Lingering Poison finished off Swallow. The Soul Badge makes it 5 out of 8, so it's time to head to Pewter City to take on Brock. It feels a bit weird leaving it this late to take on Brock, but this is the order that they seem to want. Another team of five is required for this one. We're going to be using Nidoran Female, Paris, Onyx, Corsola, and Natu. This team has quite a lot of quad weaknesses, but it also has Pokemon who can cover those weaknesses, so we're in okay shape. The quality of the team may be an issue though. At 410, Corsola comfortably has the highest base stat total of the five. It could very well turn out that our journey ends where the first random card challenge began. Let's check out our movesets anyway. Hope the Nidoran is up first. At level 51, she's got Poison Jab, Toxic, Return, and Shadow Claw. Shiitake the Paris is also at 51, and his moveset's made up of x Spore, Toxic, and Return. One level higher at 52 is Chuna the Natu, and he's got Psychic, Confuse Ray, Silver Wind, and Shadow Ball. At level 53, we've got Ronki the Onyx, and he's equipped with Stone Edge, Screech, Return, and Earthquake. Lastly, we have Chorus the Corsola at level 54, and she's got Ancient Power, Aqua Ring, Recover, and Surf. Alright, let's give this a go. Brock leads off with Ditto, and we start out with Nidoran. Honestly, there's probably not a better Pokemon to face with a weak team. After Hope attacks with Poison Jab, Ditto survives just long enough to transform. Before Nidoran can attack again, Brock uses a full restore, which feels like a bit of a waste. Hope takes down Ditto with return, but Brock's leading Pokemon does at least deal some damage. Another gym leader calls on Chimeco second, but this time it's actually a problem for us. The Psychic type takes down Hope with extra sensory to level up the match. We bring in Corsola and set up Aqua Ring before going on the offensive. Chimeco is able to cut away about half of Corsola's HP before being washed away by a crashing wave of Surf. Garbus is up next for Brock, and with Hydro Pump dealing a little less than half damage, we've got a chance. By perfectly timing switches between Recover and Ancient Power, Chorus is able to take down Garbus for her second knockout of the match. Brock sends in Azumarill, and with all of her energy expended, Corsola is unable to stop Aquatail. That leaves her unable to battle, taking us down to 3. We bring in Shiitake, but without teaching him any Grass-type attacks, we're still in trouble. It very briefly looks like we're going to get the better of Azumarill with x Scissor, but another full restore sets us back. Double Edge spells the end for Paris, and now we're down to a 2 on 2. Natu comes in and attacks with Psychic, but it's not enough to finish off Azumarill. Brock calls for Hydro Pump, and if Tuna goes down, it's all over. Luckily, Natsu lives through the hit because I don't think Onyx would stand a chance against the Zoomerill. A second Psychic wipes out the remainder of his health, leaving Brock with only his Clefable. Tuna outspeeds the fairy Pokemon to get in a Psychic before a powerful Double Slap takes out the weakened bird. Onyx comes in last, so to end our run, Brock will have to take down the Pokemon that saw his journey begin. After Ronki destroys the Pewter Gym sprinkler system with Earthquake, Brock can't bring himself to attack. 
Instead, he calls for Clefable to use Minimize, letting the Rock Snake attack again with Earthquake, earning us the win. We got pretty lucky with Brock's team there, but now that we've got our hands on the Boulder Badge, it's time to go find Blaine. We only need to draw three cards for our battle with the Cinnabar Gym Leader, and, um, yeah, I think that'll do. Regice, Breloom, and Whiskash give us an average base stat total over 500 for what must be the first time in the series. I can't really see any way that we'll lose this. We do have Regice and Breloom shared weakness to fire, but Whiskash should cover that nicely. Let's have a look at the team. First up, we've got Kuzik the Regice, who's at level 54 with the moves Ice Beam, Ancient Power, Flash Cannon, and Thunderbolt. Also at 54, we've got Castle the Breloom, who's got Seed Bomb, Leech Seed, Return, and Brick Break. Up last, we've got Nero the Whiskash at level 59, and his moveset's made up of Waterfall, Return, Stone Edge, and Earthquake. This team feels pretty overpowered, so let's get right into this. Blaine leads off with Houndoom, and we start with Regice, so not the best matchup. We immediately recall the legendary Titan and send in Whiskash. Blaine calls for Embargo, and that gives Nero a free chance to use Earthquake. That makes for an easy one-shot, and quickly down to two, the Cinnabar Gym Leader sends in Sceptile. We make another switch, bringing Kuzik back in, because Whiskash cannot take a grass hit. Sceptile's speed allows him to strike twice with Leaf Blade, which actually leaves Regice in pretty bad shape. A single Ice Beam puts an end to Sceptile, though. Blaine returns Sceptile to his Pokemon and sends in his final Pokemon, Sceptile. Alright, interesting strategy. This could actually be a tough one. A level 54 Sceptile almost got the better of Regice, and Whiskash doesn't stand a chance, so we need to switch in Breloom. In the end, Blaine's second Sceptile can't connect with any attacks. Kasa easily dispatches of Sceptile number 2, earning us the Volcano Badge and leaving only one badge left to collect. We'll be going after that next time though. There are 18 cards left to draw for 3 full battles, so next time will be our final episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.